other one, this is Armstrong Williams on the right side. Don't curse, speak English. Virtuous society. I dare you to listen. Hey, hey, turn it up. Hey, Armstrong. Get on the right side. Armstrong. Elevate your mind. Armstrong. I'm Armstrong Williams on the right side. Armstrong. Yo, man, it's your boy K.O. And you're tuned in to the most conservative of our brothers. Armstrong. The Armstrong Williams Show. Please give me a break. Grow up. Oh, hello, everybody. Yep, we're live. You're live. Welcome to our house. Not our house, our house. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us on today's broadcast. We're live and in living color. 1-866-620-6620. 803-733-5620. I'm Armstrong Williams, your humble host. Just so glad that, that just another day, another day for dialogue. Hopefully we can get caller and listener participation on the subject today. Uh, let me see. Charles, are you on the line? Charles Martin. I guess not. Um, but I'm here. Um, um, I am here. So, we have open mic. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I, I actually thought we were going to talk about um, Russian orphans with um, Charles Martin, but He's not on the line. I don't know what's going on with our iChat. It hasn't worked since my return, but you know what? I'm not going to concern myself with that. So it's a little open mic. Oh, we're, we're too. Well, I, I thought you were a no-show. No, I I called in a minute ago and it rang forever and it didn't. Uh, you know what? That's no a story. That's a story I'm told every day. It rings forever, but eventually they answer, I guess. I've heard yep. that story before. How are you today? I am fine. You know, you found that two successful investment firms, and a, you have a professional background in finance and technology. Before we get into the Russian or orphans, talk to us about your what would be your remedy for the financial crisis we face. Well, I'd throw all the bums out in Washington, D.C. and start all over. <laughs> you know, um... I think uh, clearly uh, our country is out of control in terms of government spending and government involvement in all of our our lives. I mean, we can't continue to spend a lot more than we take in in terms of revenues, and increasing the taxes uh, really doesn't solve the problem. The problem's really on spending, and and our politicians just. Uh, just don't have the backbone to deal with the problems that face our country. What kind of backbone does it take to deal with these problems? Well, um, first of all, they should have to pass a economics 101 test to serve in their capacity. But the backbone issue is is really one of uh, not trying to use their positions in our Congress to buy votes by handing out goodies, spending money that our country doesn't have. You know, you know, it is a, it's, it's it's amazing that they're adding to the deficit, not cutting and trimming spending. It's a mind boggling, and America and most Americans seem to be perfectly fine with it. Yeah, I, that's a surprising thing. How many Americans seem to be uh, not uh, dismayed by the fact that this is going on? But uh, you know, in their own families, they would not spend more than they're taking in an income. Um, and companies, if they did it, they would go bankrupt. You know, you know, I, I'm not. I have to tell you, I'm Charles. So many business owners and individuals are being diminished in this economy. The question begs, who's really doing well and what is their profession? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think public service workers are doing well. <laughs> you mean government workers? Government workers, yeah. People in, in government and people in... Uh, 
you know, uh, most of the people that are educators are doing well. Um, those that are in, you know, serving our country, uh, you know, our military, fire and police, uh, you know, regulators, all those are doing pretty well. People in the private sector are, are struggling, and, you know, it's hard to find jobs and hard to find those that pay well, and many in the private sector are having to take, you know, jobs that don't pay as well as they have in the past uh, because our economy is weak and all the economic benefits are flowing to the, the government instead of into the private sector. Well, I got to tell you, elected officials are doing well. Oh, yes. I mean, it, it's most people don't realize this, but if you are elected to the House or Senate of the United States and you're only in there for one term, you get paid your salary for the rest of your life. I mean, it, it is ridiculous system where... Um, where our Congress is rewarding themselves, and um, and you know if they get uh, knocked out of their job as a, as a congressman or senator, you know, like anyone else that loses their job, they should lose their pay too. <laughs> but you know they don't see it that way. You no, know, no. It's a convoluted system, as you kind of are commenting. You know what? It's not a convoluted system. It's a corrupt system. It's a corrupt system, yes. And at the expense of we the people. That's right. We the people are paying the bills. Past, present, and in the future. Yeah. Well, I I really fear for our children. Yeah, you know, because you know that you can you can do this for a short period of time, uh, but eventually, you know, that debt burden of the U.S. is going to Way on the shil- on the shoulders of our children and our children's children. There's just no way around it. You can't just, you know, have the nation pre, you know, you know, go bankrupt. Um, the weight of that, the, it'll have to be paid by future generations. This is true. You know, how did you get involved with Russian orphans? Give us the background on that. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. There are a couple of different angles on that, but uh, probably it started uh, several years ago when uh, my wife and I helped our niece and her husband uh, do a Russian adoption. And uh, they they wanted a family and had troubles uh, having a baby, and... Uh, if you adopt in the U.S., the law is that the birth mother has a one-year look back and can change her mind, which can be very troubling. So it's very difficult. So we had connections and resources to help them. Uh, and so uh, we pursued this Russian adoption. And actually, we ended up uh, shifting it to uh, Belarus, which is white Russia. It's one of the Soviet ex-Soviet Union countries there right next to the Ukraine uh, and successfully did um, did uh, uh, adopt for them uh, this wonderful uh, little boy but you know, in the actually in Russia the adoption system was so corrupt and uh, there were so many bribes that everyone was looking for that we just became frustrated with that and then shifted over to Belarus which was you know, formerly uh, uh, part of the Soviet Union, and uh, did, uh, you know, did uh, have this adoption. And it was interesting to see, you know, the you know, boy, the baby that they acquired and kind of the behavioral challenges he has had because of, of uh, growing up in, you know, not growing up, but spending his first year or so in that agency where there's, you know, they never get uh, any love or affection. They're just raised by a Russian nurse as babies, and and the conditions are so bad there. Uh, the second thing was when I started writing the book, uh, one of the young men that works for me had a sister that went to Russia 
on a church uh, expedition for mission for three uh, three weeks about visiting uh, these Russian orphanages. And when she came back, she debriefed me on what she had observed. And, you know, I got to tell you, it was heart-wrenching. You know, they are uh, severely overcrowded and understaffed. The government there is so corrupt that the funding that is supposed to support these orphanages gets siphoned off by politicians and administrators, so very little gets to the orphanages. You know, the staff are are totally unqualified to deal with them. The facilities are run down. Um, They don't even have, you know, uh, the money for adequate heat during the cold Russian winters. So you would see, you know, this uh, gal would see like seven or eight of these children huddled on a mattress, not even with a bed, you know, uh, and that's how they would sleep. And the babies, uh, there, there were, uh, there were areas where they had uh, the infants in cribs that were just jammed into a room, and uh, the, oftentimes they were in diseased and had, uh, you know, where they were sleeping in their own excrement. And she reported it was really strange and eerie because. There was no sound, and normally you'd have babies crying, but uh, because no one would come to to care for them, they were just silent. And hold, hold that uh, for us. We're coming back. Hold that point. Fascinating story about Russian ad- adoptions and Russia's ban against U.S. adoptions. The human cost. Charles D. Martin is our guest. Don't go away. Armstrong Williams returns. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? Then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowllama.com. Hi, this is Armstrong Williams. What does it mean to be conservative? Freedom of speech, freedom of free enterprise, freedom of assembly, less government, less taxes. As a matter of fact, a flat tax. Everyone should pay proportional tax. It doesn't matter whether you make 100 million or 10,000. Everyone should pay their 10%. Everyone should have something at stake in this American economy. I'm Armstrong Williams expressing what we mean by conservative traditional value. America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org paid for by the Heritage Foundation Hi, this is Armstrong Williams with an opportunity to own a piece of paradise in Nassau, Bahamas spectacular land prices 8,000 square feet 20,000 square feet lot affordable prices hilltop properties with views of the magnificent sea just call 242-677-3120 or go to info at rightsidewire.com and leave your information. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet, you're listening to Armstrong Williams. So Russia is has issued a ban against human U.S. adoptions. Go into detail with us on and explain this. Well, uh, Armstrong, uh, it, it's really 
you know, sad for the children there. They have, in these uh, orphanages, they have really no chance in life. But, you know, I think it's largely what Putin and Russia has done is a retaliation, uh, political retaliation against the U.S. Uh, the U.S. recently passed a law uh, denying uh, visas or travel to the U.S. for uh, Russians that had been convicted of human uh, violations, you, you know. And so, um, uh, you know, I think this was a retort against that. But I, I think it's bigger than that. There, Russia really has a problem with a declining population. And most people don't understand that the, the population of Russia is declining very fast due to you know, two, two things. One is the fertility rate is very low. That is the number of babies per female uh, that uh, are, are Russian populations. Uh, and that's largely because while we know about the rich Russians, most of Russia is very poor, and the people can't afford uh, families. So, you know, they give them up for adoption or they uh, they don't produce babies, and and so the, the, the fertility rate is under the replacement rate for their population. The second thing is that most pe- most Russians would like to get out of the country, so there is a negative immigration rate uh, in in Russia, and I think that's a matter of of political concern for Putin and the Russian leaders. Um, so this is more of an indictment that of Russia's wanting Russians trying to leave their native land, and more of an indictment of the United States. Yeah, you know, from their standpoint, it certainly is. But this whole thing with the Russian orphanages is, is is really sad commentary, not just for the families here, but for those young lives in in Russia. My in my new novel, Provocateur, it's really about the life of a young Russian orphan girl, and it exposes some of the terrible conditions that orphans endure in that country. Um, and all that came out of the research and personal contact that I had with how things are being handled there. You know, there there are actually 700,000 uh, Russian orphans and abandoned children. It's the highest on the planet. Uh, and it's, it's an amazing uh, human tragedy. Um. You know, this is this is really interesting because um, why? What is Americans' fascination with adopting Russian kids? Uh, that's a very interesting question too. I think um, I think a lot of it has to do with um, probably some ethnicity in that. I mean, uh, the young boy that my uh, my niece and her husband adopted is a a blonde blue eyed you know really terrific young boy and smart as a whip and while he had behavioral problems uh gradually you know through affection and living in a loving family he overcame those but um um you know um you know, I think that uh, Americans do adopt uh, from all over the world, but uh, you know, I think in South America and and in Asia and other countries, and people tend to want to adopt uh, babies or or children who are of similar ethnicity. Although you see a lot of mixed mixed ethnic families where they adopt them uh, that are very different from them. So you know, it's it's really hard to say what the fascination might be with Russia other than, you know, I know a number of people who have adopted Russian children who do it mainly because, you know, they see how terrible the living conditions are there and they want to genuinely help those uh, children live a better life. You know, something you said, we've had, we have had shows before 
about adoption and Russian ch- Russian children. And I remember the, the lawsuit where the woman sent the child back because it's, she said she, the child has such behavioral problems. There's just nothing she could do with the child. Why is it that those so many of those kids have these behavioral problems? Where does it stem from? Well, it, it starts with, uh, with their first uh, days and months after they're born. I mean, the, the babies that uh, are born out of wedlock and into uh, are given up for adoption have they don't have a mother that uh, that holds them and gives them love and nurtures them as a baby you know they go straight into these orphanages they are treated essentially like animals they get no love and the uh, affection deprivation that they uh, experience in the first part of their life uh, really twerks their whole, you know, behavioral makeup as as young people. Why why did why the poverty? You don't hear enough about the poverty. Is it really abject poverty in Russia? And is that the majority of the country? Yeah, uh, poverty is, or or whether it's poverty or people living with kind of minimal subsistence means is very prevalent in Russia. They, they, the, you know, we in the United States talk about the disparity between the rich and the poor, but in Russia, believe me, you know, the concentration of wealth is huge in uh, the hands of a few people like the oligarchs and leading political figures and those that have the big companies and the rest of the population, you know, suffers economically beyond anything that we would normally expect out of a country that's as advanced as Russia is. But you know, you sound as though you're talking about a third world country. It it seems that way. It, the odd thing, uh, Armstrong, is that uh, Russia, the people are very well educated. Russia, you know, education in Russia is free, not just uh, from uh, K through 12, actually it goes to 11, but actually even through college. And it has one of the highest education per capita ratios of any country in the world. Yet, you know, because of their the way they're e- economic system works you know most of those people live a bare subsistence and and it's struggle i mean i i was in uh st petersburg a couple of years ago and met this uh uh lady that was working as a tour guide for actually for pennies and uh she had her master's degree and in uh some science thing was very very bright and she could not make enough money to, you know, she was living with her parents. She was like 35 years old and still living with her parents because she couldn't afford even an apartment on her own. And, you know, and she would, if she could, she told me if she could get out of the country, she could make 10 times as much as she was making in Russia. But they pro, they will not allow their people to leave the country. So, Help us understand what makes their educational system so um, such a cut above everyone else. What is it? I don't know whether the quality is that that high. I don't really know about the quality, but I do know that as a matter of public policy, they have uh, really made um, education a priority in their country, uh, which is one good thing that's that's present well it was really and, and, um, and obviously they must have very good teachers they must have a wonderful environment to learn kids must learn obviously because when you can compare the kind of poverty you talk about to the rest of the world and you think about the educational what they what they're able to achieve and how they st- stack up against the rest of the world something's just not right look at all the money we spend on education here and we're the richest country in the world yeah you know, and and we are not as uh, not as effective at least K through 12 i mean our university system is the best in the world but 
uh, our K through 12 system really is substantially underperforming uh, its potential and what we would all aspire it to do. Um, you know, so there's there will be no more. What about the black market adoptions? Will Americans still try to adopt them through the black market? Well, uh, I wonder whether the black market, you know, the market in a way has always been somewhat black in that anyone uh, adopting a uh, Russian uh, child has had to pay bribes. I mean, it's just deeply ingrained in the corrupt system they have. And, you know, um, so in a way, the whole market is, if not black, it's gray in the way that it operates. And I don't think you could, you know, get a child out of there without some, uh, you know, politician putting his stamp on it and allowing you to get him out. I I doubt that there's much of a black market, but in a way, the whole market is black. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, and all the best. We, we must have you back again. Happy 2013 to you. Uh, happy 2000 to you, and thank you for having me on your show. Our pleasure. Again, thank you. Armstrong, Armstrong. Armstrong Williams returns home. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Life is full of unexpected changes. Everyone has potential to do wrong. And when they choose to do it, contact the Buxell Group for your private investigation needs. TheBuxellGroup.com or by phone at 202-243-9746. Whether there's an instance of a cheating spouse, child custody, process service, or security, don't continue suspecting. Get closure so that you can move on with your life. Visit TheBuxellGroup.com now or call 202-243-9746. If you think it's happening... It probably is. To travelers along the road of life who have fallen asleep at the wheel, to the many who woke up in time to avert disaster and get back on the righteous path, for the ones who crashed and survived and now adhere vigilantly to a virtuous and righteous path. Finally, Armstrong Williams' much-anticipated new book, Reawakening Virtues, gives his insights into these daily challenges and much more. Reawakening Virtues is available in bookstores and at Amazon.com. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sports shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Most Americans simply have never been taught the basics of money management, let alone how to secure their financial future. But there is hope. Financial Education and Literacy Advisors, also known as FILA, does what others don't. FILA teaches financial education. If you'd like more information about providing a financial wellness program for your employees, or a credit-bearing college course in personal finance, or other valuable programs, please visit MyFILA.com. That's M-Y-F-E-L-A dot com, or send an email to info at MyFILA.com. Elder Chicks is an exciting part of the fastest growing segment of the population. Women in their 70s, 80s, and older who are mastering the art of a senior life. We're no longer unseen and unheard. We're providing role models for each other and the baby boomers who are fast approaching retirement. Join our virtual community. Hit www.elderchicks.com on your computer keyboard. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. And welcome back to the Armstrong Williams Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Jan Morgan, how are you? Jan Morgan is not there. 
Well, she will be there. Our phone lines are open. Um, um, 733-5620-1866-620-6620. I, I'm still trying to figure out the fascination with Americans uh, wanting to adopt Russian kids. Uh, I was just really, you know, to me that was a fascinating uh, conversation uh, with our guests. Um, there's so much you can learn from the experiences of others. Uh, it really is. I mean, just a fascinating, fascinating um, discussion about adoptions. And th were you aware of the mind boggling poverty um, that existed in Russia? Um, were you aware and how these kids grow up separated from families have no affection and you know I always wondered why these Russian kids had such behavior problems when they came to the United States imagine what it is a parent has to do um, in order to win the ch trust of that child and to make that child secure it wow you know it's it's tough enough raising a child, but imagine raising a child with those kind of issues and the abusiveness that the child doesn't even realize that they have experienced in, 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 at such a tender age. 733-5620-1866-620-6620. Jan Morgan will be joining us to talk about her latest project here on the Armstrong Williams Show. Um, and so, But in the meantime, our phone lines are open and we're taking your calls you know so many of us um want to be successful there's no question people really you no know, everybody wants to find their calling in life everyone does everybody wants to contribute and and make a difference in the world. And, and so, you know, we talk about success, which is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. And some people think it's the attainment of popularity or profit. But success for some and success for many is not the same. The question that is asked often is exactly what is success um is it truly measured by what you have left when you go to the grave um because for the living the quest to succeed is an ongoing process for nothing in human life is ever utterly perfected complete until more can be done you know, we can never be satisfied. There is so much that we want to do. This is because success means achieving the best result possible um, to this, your satisfaction um, after exp expending your energy in so many arenas and being able to move to new arenas and do the same. And success is within all of us. So success is, a, is an internal thing. It should not be an external thing. It is a feeling. It is a sacrifice. And you know it because you feel it. You feel good when you do a good deed, when you help someone, when you empower someone, you make a difference in someone's life. When you know that you're a good son or a good daughter. When you know you go to that classroom and you study. And you make the sacrifices to go home and study even more. And when you take that test, you ace it with a hundred. That is success to you in that classroom. Success is when you, before the game, after the game, on the weekend, you're at that free throw line. You're at every possible position on the ball court. Just shooting until you perfect your shot. And then in crunch time in the middle of that game, you walk up to that free throw line and you don't miss because you put in the work. Many people want success, but they're not willing to put in the work. You like the idea of losing weight. 
You like the idea of starting a business. You like the idea of spending less and saving more. But it's only rhetoric. At some point, you've got to activate it and get started. And most times people have ideas, but having ideas is just not enough. Wanting to do better is just not enough. Yes, it starts with an idea, but an idea that's not put into action, that's not moving, is bare, hopeless, useless. So, how many people found themselves in the gym because they've decided to lose weight? And all of us know in two or three weeks' time, the gym will return to its normal, regular. We've seen it. I've seen every January. All these new faces. Everybody locking up all the bikes, all the treadmills, all the weights. You can barely move. But all you got to do is give it, just give it time because you will separate the ordinary from the extraordinary. And many people just don't have that little extra to be extraordinary. People, and I'm not going to say that they're lazy. They just can't find the willpower, the energy, the motivation, the discipline to do something better, to make a change. You know this person that you're dating is not good for you, but you hold on, you're abused. They manipulate you. They spend your money. They don't respect you. And yet you stay in the relationship because you feel you can't do better. And they exploit you and disrespect you even more. And yet you, you keep thinking that the person is going to change. And what has to happen is that you have to change. Why do we keep looking for answers everywhere except where they really matter within ourselves? There's no secret to success. It's no secret. Sacrifice. Many people are not willing to sacrifice a lesser good for a greater good. You're not willing to put in the work. You're not. You know you need to lose weight. You know you need to stop eating those sweets and that fried chicken and that greasy macaroni and cheese. You know it. And you say, oh, just a little more taste. You say, I'm going to do it next week. Oh, let's go. I'm going to eat. And I'm going to pick out between now and the first of the year. And starting the first of the year, it's going to be a brand new me. I I'm sorry. It's not going to be a brand new you. Oh, no, it doesn't work that way. Um, it doesn't. So I'm saying to you, how do you get started defining your best voice, your best self? And I'm not doing all this psycho babble that these people talk about in motivational speeches. And I'm not interested in that. I'm talking about how you find the best in yourself. How? Success is also right standing with God. He's the giver of the peace, really sought by humanity. We keep looking for peace, peace in all different places, in sex, in marriage, in friendships. And yet, peace only comes from God. Such as success is prosperity in all things and be in good health. That's what John 3.12 tells us. Success is also having your life under control. You plan to spend time with your family. You plan to spend time with your children. You plan to take more time with yourself. You plan to lose weight. You plan to take better care of yourself. You plan to get out of that bad relationship. You achieve it by just doing it. That's how you achieve it. Can you make that change can you map it out a plan for your life and then achieve it that is what success is and everybody has it you don't have to read these books and pay all this money to go to these seminars or watch these tv shows it's within you the bible is the best 
book of life I have ever read. Is someone on the line? Hello? I'm Sean. Oh, Jen, you finally decided to join us. <laughs> well, I got my time zones off. I was thinking I, I couldn't tell if I was an hour well, earlier, an hour later, well, an hour on time. Well, so now, sorry just, about that. Just hold there. Let me just finish this because we're going to break. Um, okay. Jen, Jen Morgan has decided to join us, and we'll get to it. But to many, success is measured in terms of monetary wealth. That is achieving financial independence and prosperity. But I feel that success should encompass certain things. Happiness in family life and in marriage for the married people. Having the most healthy relationship with God Almighty and confidence that there's eternal life. Happiness or satisfaction and the occupation or vocation that you may have. Rich in respect from one's friends and other relationships such as from workmates or workers as the case may be. Therefore, I feel that financial prosperity without the aspects that I just mentioned does not necessarily mean one is successful. I'm Armstrong Williams. When we come back, Jay Warner will be joining us to talk about her new project. Don't go away. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundit's views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? Then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowlama.com. Anderson Brothers Bank, a family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be, stability right in your backyard since 1933. America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org, paid for by the Heritage Foundation. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sport shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet, you're listening to Armstrong Williams. So, Jen Morgan, what is success for you in your life? I'm sorry, what did you say, Armstrong? What, how, how, how have you defined success in your life? Exposing, exposing injustices and wrong on a daily basis and seeing people respond to that and say, I didn't know, but I know now, what can I do? Every time I, I, I see that, whether it's on my Facebook pages or through my website, that is, I feel like, okay, today was a success. 
even if it was just one person reached or because that one person can tell someone else and pretty soon, you know, it, it, your, your, your level of reach and exposure grows uh, to whatever issues you're trying to expose. So that, that's my definition of professional success. Personal success is to be loved, to love and be loved and to know God's uh, purpose for your life. I think if you, you know, if you know what that is and you know it without a doubt, and you, you seek that, um, you know, how can you not feel personally successful um, as well? Tell us about your latest success, your latest project, and why it's just giving you so much to smile about and such purpose in it. You know, it's really not anything to smile about, Armstrong. It makes me sad uh, because, it, and, it, and I'm, I'm not calling it successful yet because, the reach is not large enough. We produced a documentary. I say we. I'm representing an organization called Rampant Injustice, and it is an organization of citizens in this country who are fed up with injustice and corruption in our federal government. We produced our first documentary, and it's called Rampant Injustice, which is how, where we got our group name as well. And it is about, uh, it exposes the blatant trampling of the constitutional rights of American citizens during white-collar crime investigations. Armstrong, white-collar crime investigations by the Department of Justice and the Criminal Investigation Division of the Internal Revenue Service. Now, to explain what this is about, I want you to just imagine for a moment, you're a little private business owner, small business owner, okay? You, there is so much paperwork, so much information, so much uh, paperwork you have to do related to your financial transactions and the government and taxes. If you miss one little piece of paper, you do one small thing wrong, Instead of the government or IRS coming in and saying, sending an agent in or sending you a notice and saying, hey, you didn't turn in this form on this financial transaction, they're sending in with no warning, no prior notice to any of these business owners. They're sending in 40 to 50 agents, flying them in from all over the country to small businesses all over the country and conducting paramilitary Gestapo-style raids. We saw this on a large scale with... Uh, Gibson Guitar. We all know what happened to Gibson Guitar. But it was a big story in national news because it's a big company. But that same type of raid is happening to small businesses all over this country. And I want you to understand that when this happens, in many of these cases, there are no indictments that ever come down. Uh, no one's arrested or charged with anything. But what happens is these little businesses get slammed in such a way that they end up having to fold or start over. And it is crippling the businesses in this country. One way that they're hit, 40 to 50 agents come flying in in unmarked vehicles to these little small businesses, and it becomes a news story. All these news outlets are standing there reporting that, oh, there's this big federal raid on this small little business that these feds aren't saying what it's about. So from a, from a, from a marketing perspective, the business loses credibility instantly. Oh, they must be doing something horribly wrong for 40 to 50 agents from all over the country to come swarming in. That's number one, the marketing slam. Number two, they come in and confiscate. In one business, uh, they confiscated 86 boxes of, of paperwork and computers and just all kinds of information that's pertinent to running that business. They shut down the assembly line of that business. They, they comp made all the employees, 40 to 50 employees, gathered them all in a tiny little room, took all of their cell phones. These are little employees who make minimum wage. They don't know anything about the financial transactions of their business owner. They just come into work every day. They fill uh, bottles with water. They put the bottled water in the boxes, and they put it on the trucks to ship it out. You know, they don't know anything about all that, yet they're detained all day without the presence of an attorney, without being charged or investigated for anything. They are interrogated. In some cases, employees are treated to being federal agents coming in and drawing a loaded gun and pointing it at their head. These are people accused of nothing. So you've got that. And then you have the, the federal government coming in in these same raids and taking hundreds of thousands of dollars out of these small business owners' business accounts without telling them, without charging them with anything, without just freezing assets while an investigation is ongoing. I'm talking about removing, in one case, $475,000 mm. out of one mm. business owner's business account. He was writing pay-up roll checks to his little employees who depend on those checks. They had to go home with no paycheck and nothing to pay their bills with because the federal government came in and seized all that money. That business owner still hasn't been charged with a crime. Eight months have passed. 
He still doesn't have 85% of all the paperwork and files and information he needs to run his business. And Armstrong, this is not isolated. We're hearing some businesses all around this country where this has happened, and it's forcing them to shut down. The, the video is called Rampant Justice. Look it up on YouTube. Uh, the exposure to this video is growing unbelievably. We've got, a, I think, the last check, 156,000 hits. But we're still waiting for somebody like Fox News or any of the major television networks to pick this up and say, hey, there's something to this. You know, just because it, this, these aren't big companies. But Gibson Guitar, of course, we did interview the Gibson Guitar CEO on this, and he, he understands and admits this is a problem going on, and he's fighting back. It cost his business $5 million to fight the federal government. They were never charged with anything. So you see what's happening, and uh, we're just wanting the exposure. We're wanting congressional and a congressional investigation. That's what I'm calling for. And I'm also asking for state governments to step up and represent the citizens of their states to the federal government rep rather than representing the federal government to their citizens. We're asking for states to take back their state's rights and their state's sovereignty until the federal government is reined in. Uh, the branches of government are out of control. The executive branch is not monitoring the legislative branch. The legislative branch is not monitoring the judicial branch. It's, we're all out of whack, and we've got to get, get it back, Armstrong. You know, how can the government get away with this? Because people, I tell you what, there are a lot of business owners that did not want to talk to me about this on camera, and I covered that in, in, in a stand-up in the middle of this documentary. I explained that I talked to a number of business owners, business owners who are terrified. Think about it. The government comes in and they, and they raid your business and shut you down and take all of your files, and they, they take all of this money out of your account. They don't charge you with anything, but they say, hey, you know, we may be back, and you're still under investigation. You're scared to say anything. But I talked to one business owner who was, you know, former Green Beret. He, just, he is a broken man now. You know, in his little community, he has a reputable, uh, a great reputation, never been accused of doing anything wrong. And it, he is a broken man. He said, this has destroyed my life. It's destroying my family. It's destroying my business. And he said, you know, it amounted to one piece of paper in one transaction that we didn't fill out because we didn't know any better. Uh, and he said, you know, it's a shame that the federal government just didn't send in an agent, one agent with a subpoena, and say, here, we need all of your financial transaction paperwork. Why, did, why send in 40 to 50 agents at taxpayers' expense, flying them in from all over the country, and, and conducting paramilitary-style uh, armed raids against American citizens? It's over the top, it's excessive, and it's without cause. Uh, you know, you justify an armed raid in, in, when you're raiding drug houses, Armstrong, when you're raiding businesses or situations where there's a, there is a, a, a documented risk of some sort of armed confrontation from the business owner. That's not the case in any of these instances. But the list is growing. We are building a list. Our organization is. We, have, we are establishing a website that will be up in a few days called Rampant Injustice. The website will be a place that that businesses and Americans around the country can come to and tell us about the injustices that are happening to them. It will be a place where people who want to help us to finance the future documentaries, since we can't seem to get the networks interested in doing and covering these stories, we'll go out and cover it. And uh, hopefully with the support of citizens, we're going to be able to continue to do what we're doing. But if nothing else happens, at the very least, we have exposed this one injustice and that's happening to, to businesses around America and hopefully... You know, somebody in the national press will pick it up and give it the exposure that it deserves. You, you know, um, you know, you make it interesting. You didn't really say this, but you immediately made me think about this. So many people that go through these hardships that are exploited like this don't even report it. They just don't. Well, they're scared. I mean, think about Armstrong. I sat on this story for two months before I agreed to do the documentary because I know. You know, it's, it's one thing to expose Operation Fast and Furious. You're exposing the Justice Department, and you're exposing, you know, some uh, a bad situation there, and, and potentially some criminal uh, activity between uh, criminal actions of our federal government. But in this case, when you expose something like I've exposed, and you're 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 taking on the big bad boys, the Internal Revenue Service and the Justice Department. You know, I was told, Jan, if you do this, they're going to come after you. Hope your hope your financial stuff is in order, and even if it's not, they're still going to come after you, and and I was hesitant. I sat on it for two months because I know that stepping out there is going to create problems for me in my life. But at this stage, my attitude is somebody has got to do it and nobody else is doing it. 
and, and the same thing with any network, with any TV reporter, any TV anchor. Who wants to be the person that exposes this? And, and <laughs> you know, it, it, it takes a lot of guts, Armstrong, and I appreciate you letting me talk about it on your show. I hope they don't come after you now. But, um, I, you know, I, we've got to tell the story, and it, it's got to get out there. Otherwise, it's going to continue. Uh, we just want, it's not, Armstrong, it's not about the guilt or innocence of any of these business owners. It is about the paramilitary Gestapo-style unconstitutional raids that are occurring. It's the nature of the raid, the, the, the unconstitutionality of it, that is the issue, not the guilt or innocence of any of these business owners. Um, you know, how can we get more information on you? Oh, you out of time, quickly, quickly. Okay, uh, Jan Morgan Media, uh, janmorganmedia.com is the best way to find me, or my Facebook pages, Jan Morgan or Jan on America. Jan, happy 2013. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you, Armstrong. Do. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his...